At this place in history, we're in Newberry with Executive Director of the Vermont Historical Society, Steve Perkins. What brings us here today? So we're going to talk a little bit about General Jacob Bailey. Okay, where does the story start? So it starts back in the French and Indian War. So when he was a mere colonel uh, fighting with the British forces, he made his way up the Champlain Valley. He ended up fighting in Canada. I mean, really made a name for himself. And then he decided to get home that rather than coming down Lake Champlain, he was just going to take a compass heading and make a beeline. And so that brought him to the Connecticut River and down to this spot. And this area of Newberry is called the Great Oxbow of the Coas Meadows. And it's a beautiful, fertile area. And it really was on the kind of the northern edge of where the British were starting to settle New England. And he said, you know, this is where I want to live. So he went to Governor Benning Wentworth and he got himself a, a charter for this town right here, named it Newberry after Newberry, Massachusetts, and ended up settling in here. So it's considered kind of one of the founders of this area. And of course, Newberry was one of the earliest towns to be settled in the, in the state. It became kind of the, the frontier during the American Revolution and part of this line of forts which protected northern New England. And regularly there were raids that came down. He worked with a, another guy and they started building a military road between here and Montreal. We'll talk about that in a different segment. But I think what it's kind of cool. We'll talk a little bit about some spy intrigue. So during the American Revolution, Jacob Bailey was very much a, a patriot, really believed in the American cause and was not really happy with anything to do with the British. But in the 1780s, 1781, 82, we were, we were the Vermont Republic and we were feeling pretty bruised as a republic that we weren't included as the, the new United States. And the Allen brothers started negotiating with the governor of Canada, General Haldimand, supposedly to bring the Vermont Republic back into the fold as part of Great Britain. I bet Bailey did not like that. Bailey did not like that at <laughs> all. He was very outspoken about it. And so the British Secret Service sent some operatives down here to kidnap him. Now there were <laughs> Tories, which were royalists who were living in this area, and there were patriots who were living in this area. And there's all sorts of stories about what happened. But supposedly his neighbor, um, who was a, a paroled officer, meaning that um, he had been captured by the British, but gave his um, word he wouldn't fight and would report on Bailey as part of his parole was living here. He heard that they were coming to kidnap him. And so he warned him by dropping a slip of paper in front of uh, his plow while they were out plowing on the next to the Connecticut River. Bailey read the paper and ended up you know, running off to hide. The British operative still bust into his house and uh, shot one of his men in the arm, didn't, didn't kill him, and ended up kidnapping his son, mm. or as they would say, taking him prisoner and brought him back to Canada. Uh, but a kind of a great story about this, uh, what was happening on the northern frontier and how important Bailey's voice was in creating not only Vermont, but also the United States. Did he get his son back? He did get his son back. Oh, good. Yep. <laughs> Happy ending. <laughs> Happy ending. Went on to live a full life uh, here in Newbury. But, you know, a really kind of cool guy and uh, very important for our Vermont story. The plot of the next great spy movie right here in Newbury. At this place in history.